It is my joy and privilege to be with you. We've had a great time. Uh, we've been in Nigeria now uh, for 12 days, and we spoke at the conference, and we've had just a great time. And this was just an absolute uh, bonus to be able to have communion with my brothers and sisters here in Africa. Praise God to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ with you. It was such an honor and privilege to be here. I'm so thrilled. And, and uh, Pastor, we do have a lot of things in common. We have this good tradition in our church, too. On the first Sunday of the month, they, my son will be conducting communion service with our people. So we'll be hooked up together. Amen? Praise God. Well, it's a joy. How many of you believe God has something good for you today? Hallelujah. Well, you see, if you put your expectors out, God will fulfill those expectations for you. Amen. So today we're going to, to get into the word of God. Let's, let's, let's do this. You're sitting there. How many of you have your Bibles or your instrument of scripture with you? I say that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hold it up to the Lord and say this after me. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. You are the living word. You have given unto me the written word that I might know you. I receive your word imparted unto me as truth in my life. And I thank you, Lord. This truth will set me free. I place demand upon the anointing of God to give unto me everything I need to live victoriously in this life. I receive the word. I'll be a doer of the word. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. The 11th chapter of Hebrews. And I want to read just one verse here. I want you to see. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. God is speaking to us in this great chapter of faith. He speaks to us about what faith is. He teaches us about those who lived in faith and, and died in faith, went on to heaven in faith. Praise God. And he says here in verse 6 to you and me, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now the first thing God said here is this, We must have faith. Without faith it's impossible to please him. Some people come along, they'll say, oh, that's what I need. I need faith. No, I ask you the question, are you born again? Is Jesus your Lord? If you're born again and Jesus is your Lord, you have faith. Did you hear me? God has imparted to you faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that you're saved by grace through faith. You couldn't be saved if you didn't have faith. Amen. So that faith came to you by God. God dealt to you that faith. He gave you faith to receive his grace. And when he gave you that faith, it was so that you could receive all that he has for you. You see, faith doesn't stop once you're born again. It just begins at that moment. And that faith gives you the ability to receive God's grace for salvation. That faith gives you the ability to receive God's grace for healing. It gives you the, the ability to receive God's grace for provision in your life. Faith will move the hand of God for you. Amen. Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 to the church there. And he said this, that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to the church at Rome. He's talking to the believers. And so he says, God has dealt to every one of us faith. So we establish in this church service this morning that if you're born of God, if the Spirit of God is on the inside of you, then God has given you a measure of His faith. Isn't that right? So you have faith. Point at yourself and say, I'm a faith child of a faith God. God has given unto me the kind of faith that will move mountains. I have the faith of God working on the inside of me. And because I am of faith, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. So you have to believe that. So the Bible says that we have faith, so that means that we can please God. Oh, you missed a good place. Say amen. Hallelujah. We can now please God. We can walk in a way that is pleasing unto God. And so he says here, but without faith it's impossible to please him, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is. 
Now, here's the thing about faith. It's important what you believe about God. Did you hear me? If you believe God is able, then your faith will take you to the mountaintop. If you just believe that, that maybe God will or maybe God won't, you'll just stay defeated all your life. You have to believe the right things about God. Amen. Whenever I was first saved, I wasn't taught that. I thought maybe God would make me sick to teach me something. God would try to, you know, keep me poor so that he could keep me humble. And that's what I believed about God. But then I got into the word and I sat under the teaching of a man named Kenneth Hagin. And he began to teach me that I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. I'm redeemed from poverty like in one. I'm redeemed from sickness and disease. And it is not God's will for me to go through life, beat down, beat up poor, defeated, sick, and grumbling. Amen? It is God's will that I be blessed. And so you see, what you believe about God affects how you live. Did you hear me? I believe He is my healer. I believe He is my provider. I believe He is my deliverer. I believe that God is greater than my problem. Amen? See, in John chapter 8 and verse 31, Jesus was speaking to those who were believing on him. And he said in verses 31 and 32, if you continue in my word, then you'll be my disciples indeed. And you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God gave us his word to set us free? Come on. See, when you come to church in a great church like this, and I know you're taught well because I've talked to your pastor, and you know he's, he's ministering life to you. He's ministering the word to you. You come and you draw that word into you, and you realize this is truth to set me free. This is truth to cause me to be more than a conqueror. This is the truth so that I can believe God, and I can get my prayers answered, and I can move mountains, and I can defeat the devil, and I can be an overcomer in this life. Amen? See, that is God's will for each and every one of us, not just some of us, but for all of us. And when we come and hear the word, it affects what we believe about God and how we believe God. You see, I was never able to get a healing in my body until I changed what I believed about God. Whenever I began to get the truth that Jesus is my healer and that by his stripes ye were healed and ye is me, amen, Whenever I begin to believe that, all of a sudden I had faith to be able to receive healing into my body, praise God. And I, I can remember when I first got the revelation of that Jesus was the healer. My wife and I were driving, in this, in, in, and I'll, I'll take you back a few years. This was in 1977, praise God. And so we were driving along in our car, and we were going from one state to another. We visited some friends. And I'd been meditating on the scriptures on healing. A person to give me scriptures on healing. He'd introduced the word to me. And as I meditated on those scriptures, all of a sudden it just came real in my spirit. Jesus is my healer. I don't have to be sick anymore. I don't have to be bound anymore. And, and, and I can remember I'm driving along in this car. And, and I turned to my wife and I said, I'm not going to be sick anymore. And she looked at me and she said, what? I said, I'm not going to be sick anymore. Now, one of the reasons I said it real loud was because I hadn't gotten the revelation that God wanted me to prosper at the time. And my car was so bad. And it was such a mess that it was as loud in the car as if you were on the outside of the car. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, I had to speak loud. And so I said, no, the Bible says that Jesus himself took my infirmities and bore my pains and by his stripes I was healed. And I believe that God is my healer. Today I began to walk in the divine health of God. Amen. And when I believe that, God became that to me. Did you hear me? See, God is already that, but he has to become that to you. Did you hear me? That day didn't change God. That day changed me. I'll say it again. When I got the revelation that Jesus is my healer, that didn't change Jesus. He was always the healer. But what it did is it changed me because now I was receiving him as my healer. Amen. Now you say, have you been sick since then? I have been attacked with sickness since then. That means the enemy has tried to put things upon me. But whenever he tried to put things upon me, I believe that God is my healer. And I stood on his word and God healed me, delivered me, set me free and kept me healthy and strong. Hallelujah. Amen. 
and he'll do the same thing for you. But you have to believe that. I can remember I was sitting in class going to school at Rama, and, and, and we were just barely making it because we hadn't grasped the revelation that God wanted us to prosper. And so therefore I'm sitting in class and, and we had just had a seminar on, on being redeemed from the curse of poverty. And we had been taught that poverty, lack in one, is of the devil. That he comes to steal, kill, and destroy and keep you defeated. And Jesus came to be your provider. And that he came to take that curse so you could have full provision in your life. And then the, one of the teachers in one of the classes said this. He said, I had a word from God this morning for you. As I was praying for this class... Isaiah 119 came to me that if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And he said, if you're here willingly and if you're here obediently unto the Lord, then you have a right to eat the good of the land and you can claim his provision for you right now, right where you're at. Praise God. Now, when he said that, the revelation that God is my provider came into my spirit. And whenever that became real to me, I just in class, kicked my foot out, went, hallelujah. And I began to believe God. And my wife and I began to come out of poverty. We began to come out of lack. We began to come out of, of need and began to move over into God's provision. Amen? Because you see, faith comes to God and believes he is all of this. Did you hear me? I believe God is everything he says he is. And I believe he will do everything he said he would do. Amen. You and I have to grab a hold of that. We have to put it in our hearts because when you come to God, it's not enough just to believe. Because he goes on and he says this, he that comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, it means when I come to God, I have to believe he will do what he said he would do. Amen. Amen. See, you and I will never accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. We will never have what God wants us to have until we believe God will do what he said he would do. Come on, you had to believe. What's that mean? That means when you come to God and you believe him to touch you and minister to you, then you believe he will do that. When you pray, you believe you're going to receive it. When you confess the word, you believe God's going to bring it to pass in your life. Because when you enter into faith with God, you enter into partnership with God. Now you are working with him and he is working with you. And how many of you know that you and God are a majority? Amen? You have the power to open overcome anything the enemy throws at you when you are walking with God. Why? For ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? So that means you've got the greater one working in your life, helping you to overcome, praise God. So we begin to walk in this faith covenant with God and we begin to believe that he is. And you see, this is what Christianity is. Christianity is not just coming to the altar, getting saved, then hanging on and holding out till you get to heaven someday. Christianity begins at the altar. Jesus is the door, he said. Meaning what? I'm the entrance into everything God has for you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but pastor, I made the decision. I wasn't just going to hang out at the door. Amen. I moved on into the house of God. Hallelujah. And I began to enjoy the kitchen because you see, I like to eat the good things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then I went into the living room and I sat down and I started watching the good things of God. And then I went into the bedroom and entered into the rest of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Then, then I went into the workout room and started to develop my faith in God. Then I went back where he keeps all the good stuff and got the provision of God. Hallelujah. You see, we have access to everything he has in the house because we come through Jesus. How do we get there? By faith, we enter into the presence of God. By faith, we begin to appropriate the things of God and we begin to believe God for great things in our lives. Amen. You see, this, this, this is how we release the miracles of God. This is how we release the provision of God. This is how we release the blessings of God. We come to him and believe he is and that he is a rewarder of us. In other words, he's going to answer us. He's going to bless us. He's going to actually do for us what he said he would do. And that's the greatness of our God. 
Now, look over here in Luke's gospel. Can we go to Luke chapter 5? I want you to see something. In Luke chapter 5, speaking about the Lord Jesus, and here's why I wanted to lay the foundation of faith before you today, that faith believes He is. Faith comes to God believing you're going to receive. Faith comes to God and, and receives that reward, receives what God has for him. In Luke chapter 5, the Bible teaches us that the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse 17, and it says, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching that there were Pharisees uh, and, and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Now listen to this next part. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord, the dynamic, miraculous power of God was available to heal everybody in that house. Now, here's the thing you have to understand. Anywhere Jesus is, the power of God is. I'm going to say it again. Anywhere Jesus is, the power of God is. Do you understand that the power of God is in this room right now? Amen. Why is it in this room? Because God is everywhere now. He is present everywhere. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost was poured out and the Holy Spirit spread across the world. Hallelujah. And the anointing of God came with the Holy Ghost. And now God is everywhere. And wherever God is, the power of God is. Come on. He's in this house this morning. Hallelujah. And he's with us this morning. And just like with Jesus sitting here in this house with these people, he's teaching and ministering. And the very power of God is present in the house. Hallelujah. But how, how you look at this now. Look what happens. The power of the Lord was present to heal, but nobody's getting healed. Power of God's there to set people free. Nobody's getting set free. The power of God is there to deliver, but nobody's getting delivered. Why not? Because the power of God is passive. The power of God is inactive until somebody turns the switch on. Hallelujah. Somebody has to plug into that power. Praise God. You see, you can have all of these instruments up here, and we can have the power company sending electricity in, and we can have the power to run every every piece of equipment in this building. But if somebody doesn't plug into that power and turn it on, we won't get any use out of it, will we? Amen? To make these instruments work, they had to plug into the power, and they have to turn on. Guess what? The power was there before we turned them on. But it wasn't doing us any good until we tapped into it. Isn't that right? We had to plug into the power, praise God. Listen, the power of God is present every day of your life. God is in every situation that you will find yourself in. The power of God is right there when the enemy is coming in like a flood and trying to attack you. And God says, if you believe him and learn how to tie into the power, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will come like a mighty rushing stream and lift up a mighty standard against him and put him to flight. Hallelujah. Meaning what? God will give you the ability to put the devil on the run. Amen. Oh, come on. You can put him on the run instead of him putting you on the run. So the power of the Lord is present to heal. The miraculous ability of God is in the midst of the place, but nobody's getting anything. Why not? Nobody is moving in faith. They're waiting on Jesus to do it all. But how many of you know, in Hebrews eleven six, I just read, when we come to God, we must believe He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You have to do something to receive the power. You hear me? Now, what do I have to do? Let's look and see what they did. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man, which was taken with palsy, and they brought means, they sought means to, to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and led him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst thereof before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Look at this. Here we have all these people sitting here. 
just like you and I. The power of the Lord is present to heal and to deliver and to meet needs and touch lives. But nobody's getting anything until these four men bring their friend on a stretcher who has a, a physical infirmity and they can't get in. But by faith, they climb up on the rooftop and remove the ceiling tile and drop him down. Now, that was the faith of the four friends and the faith of the man on the stretcher. How many of you know the man on the stretcher better have faith? I mean, you know, if I'm on a stretcher and I got four friends going to drop me down through the ceiling, I'm going to be in faith before I'm going to let somebody drop me down through the ceiling. Amen. Praise God. It may have taken more faith to believe they wouldn't drop me than the faith to believe Jesus could heal me. Amen. But praise God. So there's faith. Notice that faith got the attention of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice he's teaching with the power of God, but whenever faith came into his presence, he stopped and it drew his attention. Do you know that God will jump over a thousand people to get to you if he'll see faith in your heart? Hallelujah. If he'll see you releasing faith and believe in him, God will move mountains to get to you. God's power is waiting to come to you. It's desiring to come to you, but you have to have faith. It was the faith of these men and their friend on the stretcher that caused Jesus to release power into their life. And if you finish out studying this, you will find that the man got up and made his bed and walked out of there. Praise God. Amen. Now somebody says, well, why was he the only one? Can I give you something? Look in, in verse 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason. Everybody say reason. They began to reason, saying, who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, here's the difference. The Pharisees and the religious people sat there and tried to figure it out in their head and tried to reason why this was going on and what was going on. The man didn't try to reason it out. He didn't try to figure it out. He just believed God. Amen. Did you hear me? Don't sit around and try to figure out how God's going to do this. Just believe God is going to do this. Amen. Don't sit around and try to figure out why this happened and that happened and what's going on here and what's going on there. No, just get your faith in God and begin to believe that God will do it for you. Don't try to question why. Just go ahead and say, I believe he is. Amen. And when you begin to release faith, God will begin to release power into your life. Amen. Now, I want you to look real quickly over into the, the gospel of Mark. Mark's gospel. And we want to look in, in, in chapter 5. Praise God. Mark chapter 5. And then this fifth chapter of Mark. We're going to see exactly how we can operate in faith. And release our faith and believe God for a miracle. How many of you want to believe God for a miracle today? How many of you, believe, you want to believe God to meet a need today? How many of you want to learn today not just to get a need met today, but to be able to get a need met, a need met every day of your life? Amen? You see, you got to understand something. This doesn't just work on Sunday mornings. Come on, this works every day of your life. Jesus doesn't want to just be the miracle worker in your life on Sunday mornings. He wants to be your miracle worker Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right every, every time. Amen. Listen, if you will learn how to walk in faith with God, you'll never be alone. And you'll never be at the mercy of the enemy. I'll tell you, some of the greatest miracles I've ever seen haven't even happened in church. And I was reading, Pastor, one day, and, and, and I was looking at Jesus through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, 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 I, and, and the Lord said, did you notice something there? The Holy Ghost spoke in my spirit. He said, did you notice the Lord got as many people healed going to the next service as he did in the service? I mean, Jesus got people healed on the journey as well as in the meeting. Hallelujah. He got them healed on the streets. Amen. He, he got them healed in homes. He got them healed in the desert. I mean, Jesus, he, he was getting people set free all the time. And the Lord spoke to him and he said, if you learn, you can walk in my power all the time. You can see my anointing all the time. You can have things happen every day of your life. And I'll tell you, we've had some great things take place. Because the power of God is always present. The anointing is always right there waiting on us to tap into it. Praise God. I, I, I shared a, a story in various repetition. Uh, years ago, my 
friends and I were getting ready to go play a sporting event. We were going out to the golf course and we're going to play a round of golf. Okay. And so I step up to the first tee and I hit my ball. Not very good, but I hit it. Praise God. And so, you know, I'm not a great golfer, but every now and then I like to get out and just enjoy myself. And so, so I hit the ball and the other three hit the ball. We're playing four men. We're playing. And so we get ready to, to go to where we hit the ball. And, and, and one of them says, pastor, is somebody calling your name? And so we stopped and we listened and we could hear a voice and it's going, pastor Hoffman, pastor Hoffman. And so we stopped and we looked around. And over here, way over here on another course, comes a man in a golf cart, and he's driving crazy, and he's hanging on to the cart. And so we stopped and waited on him. And so he comes up, and when he comes up, he, he's, he, he I could tell he had physical problems. And so he says, Pastor Alvin, you got to pray for me. I said, what is wrong with you? He said, I'm deathly allergic to bee stings. And a bee stung me. And you can see his face swelling up and he's, he's looking bad. And he says, and I can't get my medication. And, and, and I, I said, Lord, what am I going to do? And he said, I looked over and you were standing there. And the Lord said, go have Pastor Hubman lay hands on you and I'll heal you. And so he said, I drove over here as fast as I could. And I need you to lay hands on me right now so I can be healed. Well, I'm so glad I've learned how to tap into the power of God. Amen. I'm glad I found out that God is God on a golf course, just like he's God in the church service. Hallelujah. And I found out that God can be God, whether I'm in a suit or whether I'm in my golf clothes. And I, when I play golf, I look good. I may not play good, but I look good. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so therefore I'm, I'm standing. And so we just walked over and I laid hands on him and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. And the power of God came on him and the symptoms just began to disappear. And within five minutes, he was standing beside his golf cart, praising God, dancing and giving God the glory. And, and listen, he went, he, this just, this, this was about 15 years ago. This gentleman lived another 10 years. He was an older man and he lived another 10 years. And for the next 10 years, he spread everywhere he went how God healed him on a golf course when I laid hands on him. Hallelujah. And you know what he learned? He learned to tap into the power of God himself. You see, you got to understand something. Jesus wants to bless you everywhere you go. Amen. He wants to bless you in everything you put your hand to, but it takes faith to move the hand of God to bring the blessing into your life. Amen. Now in Mark chapter five, we find the Lord Jesus being moved by faith, going to Jairus's house. And he's going to go to this ruler of the synagogue and minister life to his daughter. And on the trip there, though a woman with an issue of blood comes in. And verse 25, it says, and a certain woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. She had this problem 12 years. And she had suffered many things and many physicians. And she spent all that she had. And she it was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, glory to God. Here's a woman that's in a desperate situation, but now the good news of Jesus Christ comes to her. Amen. It says, when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing that virtue and power had flowed out of him, Turn him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, you see the multitude thronging you. How sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her who had done this. And the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith. Everybody say thy faith. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, Here's a woman who has a problem. She's spent all the money she has. She's gone to all the doctors she knows to go to. And they finally have said, we can't do anything else for you. So she's given a bad report. Nothing else can be done. So what is this woman doing? She still has some fight in her. She's sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? And she hears of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me, church. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. 
Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 that you have to have ears to hear. Do you know that you can be sitting here this morning and you can have your mind wandering off and thinking about something that's going to happen this week and not hear the word of God? You're sitting where the word is being preached, but you're not hearing it because you have to have ears to hear. What's that mean? You have to decide, I'm going to hear what the man of God is speaking because what he is speaking can change my life. Amen. If you want the power to flow in your life, it begins with hearing what God can do. Because you cannot have faith until you hear it in your heart, until it becomes real to you. And so the very first thing that happened to this woman was this. She had ears to hear. Instead of hearing the doubt, instead of hearing she can't, instead of hearing she's going to die, instead of hearing that you, there's no hope for you, she heard that Jesus was the healer. Hallelujah. How did she hear it? Because in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he came out of the, with the power of the Holy Ghost. And when he went to the synagogue, he got Isaiah 61, opened it up and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach. He's anointed me to heal. He's anointed me to deliver. He's anointed me to liberate people and set the captives free. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you something today, church. Jesus is still the deliverer. He's still the healer. He's still the bearer of good news. He's still the one who will liberate you and he's still Lord. Amen. And you have to hear that because you can't believe it till you hear it. Praise God. You will never rise above the level of the word of God in your life. I'll say it again. You will never rise above the level of the word of God in your life. John third, John chapter, the, the, the one chapter of John third, John and verse two. John says this, Beloved, I pray that above all things you may prosper and be in health. And then he attached this, even as thy soul prospers. What's he saying? You will never prosper and be in health above the knowledge that you have of God. Amen? I have never been able to rise above the level of the word of God that's operating in my life. So therefore, I have to hear. This woman heard. She couldn't come out of her sickness until she heard. She couldn't have a change in her life until she heard what God had to say. Amen? Then the second thing of faith. Let me show you how to use your faith. Number one, I hear it and I accept it. Number two, the Bible says, she said. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Do you know that you cannot release faith without talking faith? You have to say it. You have to begin to confess. Do you know how you got saved? Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us exactly how we get saved. That if we will what? Confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Isn't that right? And believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. We shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with your mouth you confess unto salvation. Isn't that right? So you couldn't get saved until you confessed Jesus as Lord. It was your confession of Jesus Christ that brought you out of sin into righteousness. It was your confession of Jesus Christ that caused the power of Satan to be broken off of your life and God's anointing to come into your life. Well, listen, if it got you saved, it'll get you healed. Oh, you didn't hear me. If, it, if your confession can get you saved from your sins... Your confession can get you saved from your sickness. Amen. If your confession saved you from your sins, your confession can save you from poverty, lack and want. It can save you from any thing that the devil throws at you. Amen. Somebody says, well, I just don't know about this saying stuff. Well, do you know it's all throughout the Bible? Do you know that, that David, King David, in 1 Samuel 17, he was just a shepherd boy. And his daddy sent him down to the, his brothers because they were in battle. And when he got down to visit the battle site, the Philistines were on one side and the Israelites were on the other. And there came a giant named Goliath out. Remember the story. Anybody here remember the story of David and Goliath? Amen. Talk to me. Hallelujah. I'm used to people talking to me. Amen. Hallelujah. And anyway, uh, you know, David goes out and the, and, and eventually David goes against this giant. But you know, the giant comes out and says, 
Well, you're, what am I, a dog? Why are you sending this little runt out here against me? What? I want a man of war. And he just mouthed off and then finally starts telling David how he's going to kill him. He's going to do all this stuff. You know, you can't stop the devil from talking. But you can stop him from making it good. I'll say it to you. You might not be able to stop the devil from talking, but you can stop him from bringing it to pass. Amen? David let the devil talk. See, Goliath represents any giant, any problem, anything in your life. And I want to tell you, sickness will talk to you. It'll tell you it's going to kill you. Poverty will talk to you and tell you that you're not worth anything and you're never going to get those bills paid. Come on, are you listening to me? The, the, see the, and he'll try to make it look like a giant. The devil tries to make it look so big that you're never going to conquer it. And he's going to try to put you in fear. Come on. But what did David do? David let him talk and then David stood up and said, listen, you come out against me with a sword and a spear and a shield. I'm coming out against you in the name of the Lord, a host and the army of you are defined. And today I'm going to have your head. And today I'm going to whip your army. And today I'm going to take you down. Praise God. What did David do? He spoke his faith. Before he ever let the first stone go, David had already declared, you're dead. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? You hear what God says, and then you agree with him by saying, I believe what God says will work for me. Amen? And you begin to speak out today. God in me is greater than the giant that's against me. God in me is greater than the sickness attacking me. God in me is greater than the need that I have to deal with. God in me is greater than the problems in my home. God in me is able to get me over, and today I will get the victory over this giant. Hallelujah. Come on, you have to speak it. You're never going to rise to victory until you start talking your victory. Amen. So she be he began to speak it out. And this woman here in Mark 5, she began to say it. She's not talking sickness anymore. She's talking health. She's not talking death. She's talking life. She's not talking defeat. She's talking victory, praise God. She's not talking what the doctor said. She's talking what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Come on, you can't change your life until you start saying what Jesus says about it. Thank God for the doctors. I have a doctor on my staff, praise God. But you know what? Jesus is my great physician. Are you hearing me? Doctor says, you're going to die. But Jesus says, with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. Hallelujah. The doctor says, you're sick. But Jesus says, no, by my stripes, you were healed. The doctor says, you know, you're just not going to get it this time. But Jesus says, I already got it for you. Hallelujah. And so you begin to put your mouth in agreement and your words in agreement with the Lord. Faith has to have a confession. Your words will give direction to you. Your words will show you the path you're going, praise God. So this woman heard, and she accepted this, and then she began to say it. David said it. David defeated the giant long before he let go of the stone. Amen? You will defeat your problems long before you ever have to do anything about it because your words will begin to release the power of God to change the situation. Hallelujah. You go from disadvantage to having the advantage by confessing God's word over that thing. Hallelujah. The word of God is what? Powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword and it's alive and it will work for you. Amen. <laughs> What's the third thing this woman did? After she said... Verse 27 says uh, that, that she came in the press behind and touched his garment. She acted on what she said. She said it and then she acted. What's that mean? That means you can't confess you're healed and then sit there and, and moan and groan and say, I feel so bad. You're going to have to lift your hands and start thanking God the healing is yours. Even whenever the symptoms are still there. Why? Because what you're doing is you're channeling the power of God into that situation. You're taking the switch of faith and turning it on and plugging into the power and releasing it. She came in the press and touched Jesus. She acted upon him. I want to tell you, Pastor, I've been attacked in my body. But whenever the enemy came in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord came in and upon me. And I want to tell you, with symptoms still in my body, I would get up and start praising God. In 2004, I'll give you, for instance, I'll, I'll give you a good testimony. In 2004, in this very month, it's been 10 years ago this month, I was at Rama Bible Training Center in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, going to Winter Bible Seminar with Pastor Hagen. And so we were there, 
and I enjoyed the meetings. And the last night of the meeting, I started feeling bad. And I just started standing, believing God and feeling, I just kept feeling worse and worse and worse. I actually got out of the meeting and went out and stood out in the cold hair. I thought it might refresh me and help me. And I came back in and a couple of my friends said, are you okay? I guess I wasn't looking good. And I said, I'm, and I just kept saying, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. And so we go back to the hotel. And when I get to the hotel, I actually just collapsed on the bed and, and I couldn't get up. And I, I, I told my wife, just stand and agree with me. So she prayed and I kept getting worse. And so she called the medical people and they came over to the hotel and they examined me and they said, it looks really bad. We need to take him to the hospital. So they put me in the ambulance, take me to the hospital. You say, you're a man of faith. Absolutely. But you said you walk by faith and you've been walking in health. I have, but I also said I've been attacked. Amen. See, just because I'm walking in faith doesn't mean I'm exempt from being attacked. And it doesn't mean that God changes because I'm being attacked. Are you hearing me? doesn't mean that I'm not walking in the revelation because I'm under attack. Listen, a lot of times we get under attack and somebody will say, well, you don't have any faith. Yes, I had faith. I was under attack. And if you're fighting symptoms, that doesn't mean you don't have faith. It means you're under attack. The enemy's trying to defeat you. Amen. So, so we called, my wife called Pastor Hagen and he came over there and he prayed and agreed with me in the hospital and spoke. And finally they came out and the doctor's report was that I'd had an inner ear, just total collapse. And when it did, it threw my equilibrium off. It threw my system off. And they said, there's no, no healing for this. There's no help. We can't repair it. And, and so you're going to have to be on medication and you're going to have to learn how to get up so that you won't be dizzy. And then, and, and you're going to have to have medication so you won't be sick all the time and you can't do this and you can't do that. And so I said, okay. And they gave me a prescription and said, when you get back to your home state, then here's some doctors you need to go to and some therapists that you'll need to go to. So I got some friends to come out that worked for me and they came out and got me and we drove back. And so I went home and I was so weakened down that, that I was, I slept the first day all day long when I got back. Then the next day I could pray for about 10 or 15 minutes and I'd, I'd be so tired. I'd go to sleep and sleep for three or four hours. And, and so it was a terrible attack. And so it took me a week. And after a week, I, I started getting to the place where I could pray 30 minutes. And I was listening to the word all the time. I just put it on a CD player and just listen to the word and, and listen to teachings on healing and teachings on faith. Why? Because I know that if I'm going to get the victory here, I'm going to have to have faith in God. God is not the one that's, that's needing this. I need this. God's got the power. I have to get his power operating in my situation. Amen. And so I began to confess that by his stripes, I'm healed. And I began to thank God for my healing two weeks. Now they told me it would be six months before I would ever get back in my pulpit. It would take me six months to get myself where I had strength, six months before I would ever be able to conduct anything. Going into the second week, I got where I could get up, walk around, and I, and I still had a few symptoms and stuff. And, and, and so the third week rolls around, and I had been meditating on healing scriptures and praying for three weeks. I hadn't gone to the doctor, haven't taken any medication, haven't done any of that. I'm just going to the Word. On the third Sunday, after they told me that I wouldn't be able to preach, I wouldn't be able to ride my motorcycle anymore, I wouldn't be able to drive my car, I got in my car. And I drove to our church and I preached on healing and I got a chair and set it over on the edge of the platform like this and said, anybody needs a healing, come up here. And I sat there and they came one by one and I laid hands and we had miracles. And whenever the service was over, all of my symptoms were gone. Everything was gone. Ten years have come and gone. I never had medication. I never had any more symptoms. Jesus healed me and the power of God set me free. Hallelujah. I destroyed the giant with the word of God. Are you hearing me? And God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. But you left, you have to learn how to tap into the power of God. Amen. And it's faith that moves the hand of God. Faith will move the situation. I get so aggravated. Somebody gets under attack and people want to condemn them because they're under attack or, or you're feeling bad and they want to say you have no faith or, or you have a need come up and everybody says, well, you know, I must have done something wrong. I didn't do anything wrong and I had faith. But I was under attack. But thank God whenever I used my faith, God sent the Holy Ghost down, raised up a standard, moved the enemy off, and gave me the victory. Amen? And he'll do the same thing for you. Listen, I just decided this. If that woman's faith could get her healed, my faith could get me healed. 
And guess what? If our faith can get us healed, then your faith can get you healed. Isn't that right? But God says what? He that cometh to God. See, a lot of times the reason we get defeated, church, is because when the problem comes in, we don't come to God with it. See, faith will always bring you back to God. Whenever I was attacked, I didn't run to the doctor first. Oh, I thought you were in the hospital. I was out of it. I didn't know where I was. My wife took me to the hospital. Hallelujah. When I finally came to, Pastor Hagen and I got me back to the hotel. And I believed God. And I began to get in the Word. And it works whether it's finances. It works whether it's healing. It works whether it's deliverance. It works whether it's a problem in your home. I want to tell you, if you hear the Word, receive the Word, begin to confess the Word, and then act like it's so, God will turn your situation around. Amen? A miracle is waiting to happen in your life. All you have to do is come to God and get it. Hallelujah. Remember, it's faith that turns the power of God loose in your life. And faith is released by believing it in your heart, saying it with your mouth, and then acting like God's going to do it. Did you hear me? I believe God will do it. Therefore, I'm going to say he will do it. And then I'm going to start acting like he's going to do it. Hallelujah. And when you're fighting a fight, don't see yourself defeated. See yourself well. See yourself as more than a conqueror. See yourself with victory. Don't see yourself defeat. See yourself with victory. David didn't see himself having his head chopped off by the giant. David saw himself chopping the devil's, the giant's head off. Amen. See yourself well today. See yourself prosperous today. See yourself an overcomer today. See God working in your behalf today. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me. Glory to God. Faith will move the mountains. Come on. Faith will move the mountains out of your life this morning. Faith will set you free. Your faith will move the mountain. See, you're going to have to have faith that your faith will work. Did you hear me? See, you may have faith that your pastor's faith will work, and you should. But you know what? You also have to have faith that your faith will work. Amen? You have to believe that God will hear your prayer. God will hear your voice, that the Lord will work with your confession. Amen? So here's what I want you to do. How many of you in here, we had communion, and it was so wonderful, and pastor said it's for believers, and so everybody acknowledged Jesus as Lord, and we came forward. If you're a believer this morning, lift your hands up and wave it to God. Come on, I'm a believer. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know in whom I have believed. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what you're saying. Now, here's what I want you. I want you to just, just do this. Put your hand right here on your belly. Praise God. Because, you see, God works with us on the, in the inner man, down in our spirit man. And I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. You have imparted unto me the measure of the God kind of faith. I am a faith child of a faith God. And my faith will move the hand of God. I release my faith by believing it in my heart and saying it with my mouth. I believe this day I am an overcomer. I believe this day I am healed. I believe this day the miracle that you have provided for me is coming to me now. I command the devil, take your hand off of my blessing. I command you to loose it and let it go. I receive the divine provision of Almighty God flowing into my life. No more will I whine, cry, murmur, and complain. I set myself to speak faith, to speak victory, to walk in the power of God, to trust God. But I am a faith person, and my faith moves mountains. My faith brings victory. My faith gets prayers answered. My faith makes me more than a conqueror. In the name of Jesus, I release my faith and I receive God's miracle power flowing into my life. I receive 
every need met, every situation touched. I call blessing into my home. I call blessing into my life. I believe this day I begin to walk in the miracle power of Almighty God. And I tap into that power with my faith. And I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give him praise. You have to praise him. You have to believe God today. Believe God today. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can change things. Hallelujah. You have the power of God operating in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Faith that moves mountains has been deposited in you. Hallelujah. God is waiting on you and me to use our faith. Do you know that your heavenly father eagerly yearns to bless you? Amen. Say, so how can you say that? Because in Psalm 145, it says that the Lord is gracious. That means he yearns to bless you. Hallelujah. In Matthew 7 and 11, it says that if you earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to his? Come on. God wants to give good things to you. God wants to bless you. God wants to help you today. Hallelujah. How are you going to do it? By turning the switch of faith on. Amen. And once you turn the switch of faith on, keep the switch of faith turned on. Live in faith. Talk faith. Walk faith. Praise God. I tell everybody, batch your eyes in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Everything about us is faith because it's faith that pleases God. And I want to please him. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him one more great praise today. Give him one more great praise today. Give him one more great praise today. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. I'm going to turn this back to Pastor, but before I do, Pastor, thank you so much for allowing me to come and share. And thank you for letting me share. I, I, I'm, I'm right at home here. Amen. I'm, I'm glad I'm with family today. Praise God. And before we do, I want you to live a chance. I, I just want to pray blessing over you. I just believe God wants to bless and he wants to increase, and we're just going to trust God. Amen. Lift your hands up, and, and let's just believe God today. And whatever your need is, you've already spoken your faith. I want you to agree with me as I pray, and we're going to agree, and God's going to do mighty things. We're going to hear testimonies of miracles and healings and provision and blessings in your home. I agree with that. Father, in Jesus' name, I stand before you and thank you this day for this great church. I thank you, Father, for blessing this wonderful pastor and his wife and all the, the leadership. And we speak blessing upon them. And, Lord, upon this great congregation of people, we release the blessing. And, Lord, you said the blessing of the Lord, it would make us rich and you would add no sorrow with it. So we release that blessing working in Grace Family Church. And we thank you, Holy God, this day that that blessing brings healings. And that blessing brings miracles. That blessing brings provision and prosperity. And, Lord, we believe you this day the blessing of the Lord destroys every yoke. And, Lord, you release the anointing of God into each and every life. And we call every situation touched by the hand of God. And this day, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for moving in every situation, moving upon our lives. And we just release our faith and we believe we receive these blessings flowing now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God.